Hey guys, welcome back to the fourth video in this series on CAD routines from scratch. In the last video, if you recall, we had a, a simple 2D render of our, uh, our geometry. That's nice and all, but it would be nice if we could rotate this structure with the mouse so we can see it from different angles. That would kind of be helpful, at least for me. So that's the plan on this video. To do that, it's not actually that hard. It takes a little bit of you know, thinking, but pretty simple in the end. If you recall from last time, we had a view plane here, which was defined by U1 and U2, which are both uh, perpendicular to U3, which is the vector from the target of our view to the center of the view plane. And I want to have a few things happen. First, I want if we can click the mouse and drag it vertically, I want to rotate the view plane around, as you would expect, a vector U1, which is the you know horizontal axis. Obviously for U2, if we would rotate, if we would click the mouse and move it horizontally, I want to spin around U2. And again, if, if we can uh, scroll with the, the scroll wheel on the mouse, I want to kind of zoom in and out um, artificially. Obviously, it doesn't make any sense in terms of we're doing a parallel projection here. It doesn't really make much sense to move the view plane in and out. But what I want to do is I want to scale up the model. And we have a, we have a variable to do that from the last video. So that's the plan. Implement these three things. Um, to rotate the model around and zoom in and out, and we'll do that in this video. And to do that, it's pretty simple. We'll just be using the Rodriguez rotation formula, which is basically a simple way to relate um, a rotated vector from its original self around another uh, vector, a certain angle theta. So we'll get into how that works in a few, few minutes. Um, before we actually program the math, I want to just kind of show how we'll do this in the code, and we'll go back to this in a few minutes. So let's open up the code from last time. First thing, actually, hold on, before I do this, I want to say I also created this um, shell script here, make. Basically, that's just going to make it easier for us to compile this later on. So if that's available on GitHub, you can just use this shell script to make it a little bit easier than copying down these parameters. Um, but in our actual code, a few things um, from the last video. Let's let's com comment out the right STL parts. We don't need that for this video. And then the look at vector. Let's change that to 0.5, 0.5.5. So we'll look at the actual center of our model as opposed to something at zero for y. And so this is just going to look better when we actually render this. I, I think so. Now, what we're actually going to do is we're just going to add some lines of code here in the render loop, this while loop here in, in our draw function, to handle mass events. And that's pretty much what we're going to do. A little bit of code above and below this just, just to handle it, but that, that's the plan. We'll have some kind of um, um, mouse event handling here, and that will be pretty much the entirety of this video. So before I even do that, we have to do a couple things. If you if we look here on this Rodriguez rotation formula, you'll see that everything has to be a unit vector. Obviously what that means is it has to have unit length. And so if you recall from our last video, we had to normalize some of our, of our vectors here. The view, the view frame axes, we actually normalized each one of them um, with these lines of code here. What I want to do is because we have to do it so often in the future, I think we should just make this an actual function by itself so we can avoid having all this code every time we want to normalize a vector. So that should be the first thing we do here. We'll just say void uh, normalize vector, pass in a float vec length three. Uh, hope this makes sense. Now to normalize a vector, obviously you just have to divide by the magnitude for each component. So we'll say float magnitude equals, uh, we'll pick the uh, square root sum of the squares. So we'll take the first component, vec zero squared. You can obviously use the power function for that, but I'd like to just multiply everything out. It's probably faster. I, I honestly don't even know. Something to test. So that's the three components, all squared, square root. Now, obviously just to normalize everything, you just say, each component is, is itself divided by the magnitude. So. That's, 
that? Return. And obviously, we'll, this is a kind of like a pointer, so we don't have to use you know, an actual return. We can just address from the first index everything. That's pretty nice. Now we'll go back down to our draw function, and we'll just replace all these lines of code with the new new code. So we'll say normalize vector v1 and copy that three times for u2 and u3. And we'll delete all this, and also we'll delete this lines of printf. We don't need those. It's just a waste of space. Nice. That should just work. We'll see. Now, here's the, the fun part, actually doing the, the mouse event handling. So we will need some, some variables outside the loop. Um, first among those, I think we'll just talk about the things required to take mouse input. So you have to define at least an x11 x event. So we'll define an x event. Basically, an event is like you know, a mouse click or you know, a motion or a button press or something. That's an, an x event. So we'll define one of those, and then which kind of events we're looking at. Well, for that we have to say x select event, or wait, no, select input, right? Select input. Yeah, that's probably right. Um, and then you pass in what kind of events you're looking at uh, handling. So from the display and window, we're looking at a few things. If I go back to our GIMP thing, we're looking at mouse drags and a scroll wheel. So let me explain how that works. But let me just first tell what we need for events. So uh, we'll need a button press mask. We'll also need a button release mask. And we will need a um, button motion mask. But which button motion are we going to care about? Um, button one. So let me explain this. So basically whenever we have a button pressed on the mouse, so the left mouse button, the right, the right mouse button or the scroll wheel, it'll give us one of these events. Whenever we release one, it'll give us this event. And whenever we move the cursor and button one is pushed, we'll have a motion um, event. So long story short, we'll be able to detect everything I said. We'll be able to detect the mouse being clicked with the combination of this one and this one. And then the mouse being moved after, or I should say while it's clicked with, uh, with this one. So that's, that's pretty nice. And then also I should say button one is the left mouse button. I think button three is the right mouse button and then uh, button four and five, I think are the scroll wheel forward and backwards. I think that might vary for each different computer, but I think for mine, that's how it is. And um, button one motion mask only applies to the left mouse button, but these two masks apply to every single button on the mouse. So that's pretty nice. Now in the while loop is where you actually have to handle the events. And to do that, it's actually pretty easy. You just say x next event from the display. I think it only works for each display. And you store that value in the, the event um, that we just created. And then you can kind of just check about what's going on in the event. I mean, you just, uh, you can kind of access different properties. And I won't get into the actual finer details of this. You can look up a, a manual and look at all the particular elements of, of each of these events, but I'll just focus on what we need for this particular objective. And so we can make like a, either a switch or a series of if statements. We'll just do an if statement here. So we'll say, let's face it, for example, you want to detect if the left mouse button is depressed. You'll say if um, event uh, x button dot button equals button one. So that basically means if we have a button event for which the the button in the X button is button one. So this means a left mouse click. Um, we will have some kind of result. So we'll say f print f something to do with left mouse. I'll just show you it running. This should prove to you this is how it works. Whenever I click, I just click twice, we have two events. Obviously, the first one is me clicking down, the second one is me releasing. So we have two somethings for every mouse click, as you would expect. Let's go back down. Let's talk about this. Um, 
So how are we gonna do this? Well, I guess we have a couple different events to handle, but probably the easiest event to handle would be if it's a scroll event. So let's just do that one first, actually. Let's, let's comment all this junk out. And let's say if, um, if ev event dot x button button, sorry, uh, button equals equal button four and event x button type equals button press. We'll do something. So what does this mean? Well, this basically means um, if we have a button for push, which uh, which I is either zooming in or zooming out, I have to I have to think about that. Um, and it's and it's being pressed. So I should say whenever you scroll the scroll wheel, each time you scroll it, it does two events. It does push release, push release, press release for each time it, it rolls one indentation in the mouse. It's both events. So we'll say. Every time it does one of the events, we will um, scale something. So for that, let's, let's just say we want a, a scaling factor to be multiplied by some quantity. Let's just say 0.9F. So we want the, the scaling of our model to decrease by 10%. And then let's say if we have a the same thing, but for a button five, we have a divide by, so it goes up by by 11%. And let's see if this works. But before we do that, we have to actually define what scaling is. So we'll say float scaling equals what should we do? 0 0.1 or just I guess just 1.0. Yeah, that makes sense to me. And then when we pass in the scaling value into our shaders, we will just pass in. Scaling. So let's, honestly, this probably will break, but let's just see what happens. Make, look at that. I'm, I'm, I'm scrolling in and out with my scroll wheel and we're making the model bigger or smaller. I think I might want to have it initially be 0 0.5, um, but it, it works either way, it's pretty cool. So let's, let's do that, let's open up the function. Let's go down to scaling. Let's pick a start at 0 0.5, that sounds better to me. Yeah. And that works. So we've implemented this, this third checkbox here on our objective today. We've made the scroll wheel zoom. That is pretty simple. Now these ones are obviously much more difficult. Oops. <laughs> so yeah, we'll do that right now. Um, so how will that work? Well, let's define a couple more things up on top here. So up here, with with uh, the scaling, let's also define a bool, which is whether or not we're clicking or not. Let's say bool left click, or left clicking. Uh, I just put that to zero. You don't have to. But um, now we'll define a couple of ints. So basically, how this is going to work is we're going to basically have a linear relationship between um, what is it? How many pi pixels we are from the center. Of each axis. So let's say you're here with, with your mouse. There's some number of pixels between wh wherever you clicked and wherever you moved your mouse, both in the x direction and the y direction. And we'll use that number of pixels moved with the mouse um, to determine how much you rotate around uh, u2 or u1 or, or, or both. So we'll have to define a, a value for where you originally clicked, and then we'll be able to track where your mouse currently is with one of those events, so we can calculate those distances, you know, dy and dx. So let's make some values for that. We'll say uh, int x start and y start. Oops. Now we'll need a bunch of uh, 
bunch of floats, so we'll need uh, some floats for the actual angles themselves. So we'll say theta u1, theta u2. That will store how, how many angles you want to rotate around u1 and u2. Now let's create some uh, create some more floats for the actual vectors themselves. So I think we will need um, rotated versions. So we'll need uh, three components in the u1 new vector, u2 new, u3 new, and then we'll need. Uh, I think we'll need some intermediate ones because we have to rotate twice, once around U1, once around U2. So we'll create intermediate ones. We'll say pending, pending, pending. This, this should be fine. That's probably all we need. If not, we'll add some more later. And now we have to add in everything uh, within. So first thing we'll do first before I forget is we'll change these values here to new. So we don't want to use the same old u1, u2, and u3 for our renders. We want to actually be able to change that, so we will we will do that. So, I guess our first task will be in this this uh, if statement here. We'll say if the event is x button button one, and it's a button press. So with same as it says below, we'll say event x button type equals, oh, hold on, I messed this up. This has got to be a double equals. I'm surprised that even worked. Actually, it makes sense that it would work. So anyway, type equals button press. This will basically evaluate whenever we click the left mouse button. So what you want to do is you want to say left clicking equals true, or equals one, I guess, maybe more sensible. And then we'll, we'll set the values for x start and y start. So x start is just going to be uh, event x button dot x. And as you would expect, y start is stored in the event x button dot y. So now we have the initial point here, this point here, the left mouse button being clicked. Um, now we will say if it's released, so if equals button one and the type is button release, we want to set this to zero. And uh, we have to define some, uh, we have to basically set things now at this point. Now that we've, ideally we've calculated everything and here we're, we're just, you know, sending in the values for next time. So I guess we'll just say uh, u1 equals, or I guess we'll just say for each corner, u1 equals u1 new, zero. for all the components Basically, this means if we ever release the mouse button, we'll be able to continue using U1, U2, and U3 for the current view frame. So whenever we let go of the mouse button, U1, U2, and U3 will still correlate to these three vectors here. We can preserve that identity. And yeah, that's pretty much it. We don't even need this. I don't think we can get rid of these three lines here, two, two lines there. Now, here's the ultimate question. How can we create these vectors u1 new, u2 new, and u3 new. That's where we have to use this Rodriguez formula. So we'll create another if here. We'll say if left clicking 
and we have a motion event. We'll say event x motion type equals motion notify. That's the event type for motion events. Here's where we'll do all the actual math. <laughs> a lot of math to be done in here. So what first? Well, first we want to compute the, the angles. So going back to our little drawing here, we want to compute angles around U, U2 and, and U1. So we'll say uh, theta U1 equals something. And what will it equal? Well, it will be s some subtraction of where we are now from the X start, right? How much we've moved in the X direction we will divide that by the height of the screen. So we'll say float h, or the h is what we call the height of the, the rendering window. And then we'll have to correlate that with some amount of degrees of rotation. So um, for me, I think, I think we'll do 15 degrees, so 15.0 f, and we'll, we'll just divide it by pi so that we can use um, tiny cosine. So how can you give this, this difference function? Um, well, same way as we have before, we'll just say uh, event dot, it is x motion dot x minus x start. This will give us theta one, and then if theta two, all we have to do is change a few things. We'll change uh, that y value, x value to y, this x value to y, and this h to a w. This will allow us to calculate our thetas around the two axes that we need to calculate it around. That's pretty nice. Um, now, here comes the actual math. So let's open up this Rodriguez formula and take a look. So it's pretty simple. So here, um, V is the initial vector. V rot is the rotated version of that vector. And K is the vector you rotate around. So uh, for us, what we have to do is, say you want to rotate first around um, U2 what we have to do is uh, rotate both u3 and u1 this many degrees or this many radians around u2. So it's just to plug in this equation I'll do that really quick and I'll and I'll get back to you. Okay so I put in these functions here to rotate u3 around u2 by theta 2 as well as u1 around u2 by theta 2 I pretty much just copied this this uh, oops, this function here directly. I did define a um, a value here called mag, which is the dot product of k and v. And for that, we have to come up here and uh, define mag outside the loop. And I realized I made a mistake over here. Um, where is it? Yeah, here when I evaluate theta one and theta theta two. I should be, theta, U, theta U1 should be the, the y distance, and theta U2 should be the x distance. So that's a mistake on my part. And then I've normalized everything using the same um, function as before. So U1, U, U3, and U2 we didn't change. U2 stays the same, right? U2 doesn't change when we spin around U2. Now this should work. One more thing we have to do though is we have to actually define U1 new, U2 new, and U3 new out of the loop because right now it's gonna call U1, U2, u1 new, u2 new, u3 new into the function. We can't have that until we define it. So we'll say u1 new uh, 0 equals u1 0. And we'll copy that a couple times. I'll be right back. So it looks like this. So u1 new equals u1, u2 new equals u2, u2 new equals u3. Just setting it in the first place. So when we call it for the first time, it, uh, it actually renders. So let's see if this works. Let's make now this should rotate around the U2 axis if we move the mouse from left to right while clicking. And there you go, it does. And obviously the vertical motion doesn't work yet, we'll get to that in a second, but we do have complete ability to spin our model around. That's pretty nice. Let's go on to the second part, which is rotating around U1. So to do that, let's, let's do a couple things. First, let's, um, Let's get rid of this. 
we don't need to make these intermediate values here. But what we do need though is we have to set things um, as an intermediate result. So we want to define u1, u, I guess u2 and u3 as, as the pending types of the value. So we'll say, actually let's copy this. change some of the variable names around. I'll do that and I'll get back to you. So it looks a little bit like this. So we have u1 append equals u1 new, u3 append equals u3 new, and then u2 append is just u2. We haven't changed u2 yet. But we'll do that in this, this time around. And actually this should be the same as before. We're gonna use the same functions, everything is exactly the same. But instead of it being around u2, It'll be around u1. So we'll say rotate u. I guess we'll say u3 around u1 by theta u1. And then we'll go to rotating u2 around u1. Doesn't matter really, but it's fine. We'll pick this order. And actually, all we have to do is we have to switch out um, 2 for 1, right? So up here we're doing u3 around u2. Now we're doing u3 around u1, so two, 2 goes to 1. So make that a 1, make that a 1, make that a 1. These ones all have to become 1s. Those ones can stay 3. This becomes a 1, 1, 1. This becomes a 1, 1, 1. This becomes a 1. One, 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 one. A lot of work. You won, you won, you won. That makes sense to me. However, we have to change these these values. Instead of just being you one, you two, and you three, we have to have them actually say pen. So we'll change them all to say pen, and I'll do that, and I'll be right back. Okay, I've done that. So I've changed all the values to their their pending version for this first set of. Uh, equations. Now I'll do the same thing for the second set of equations. So in this case, we're just replacing, um, actually right, we're just swap, swapping them around. So u1, u2 will just change places, I, I believe. Yeah, that makes sense to me. So this will say u1, but this will say u2. u1, u2, 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 u1. So I'll finish this and also I'll, I'll go back and I'll change the multiple pending versions and I'll be right back. Okay, I've done that. Now we have to normalize once again, but instead of u1 and u3, it's actually going to be u2 and u3. And honestly, this should just work, work. Or not. I don't know, we'll see. This should just, should just work for us. So let's make run. I hope this works. Yeah, that works. So as you can see, now we can rotate our, our render with the mouse. And we can still zoom in and out. So scroll wheel in, let's just zoom in. Scroll wheel out, let's just zoom out. And we can rotate the model. So that's pretty cool. Now you can actually see how well we're able to project this onto the screen. It's pretty nice to me. So the next video, I'm not sure what we're gonna do yet. I'll think of something cool, probably something about the, the geometry here, maybe like the, the face normals or something or picking points on the on the screen. We'll see. I'll, I'll have a new video out in a, in a few days on this. So anyway, thanks for watching.